the Workforce Connections podcast, where we discuss workforce development in Southern Nevada. Here's your host. All right. Welcome to today's WC podcast episode. We have a very special guest visiting visiting us from Austin, Texas. Uh, They are here for a best practices exchange from the Workforce Solutions Capital Area Workforce Development Board with our friend Tamara Atkinson. Uh, Today we have Mark and Dave here. Uh, Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Jaime. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yes. Great to be here. So let's dive right into it. Again, we're going to we have lots to talk about. but Mark, you are the vice chair of the Workforce Solutions Board. Tell us a, a little bit about uh, your role there and what do you enjoy most about that role? Absolutely. I, I think most importantly for us uh, in, in, in title, you know, I, I think vice chair of, of what comes with that. Um, with, with this team that we have, um, it, it's the collaboration that we have together. Uh, I, I think from a, from a um, forward thinking standpoint and innovation, um, we have a team on this leadership group that um, continues to look for ways and and row in the same direction of how we can impact our workforce in many of our different sectors that have been identified in the Austin marketplace. And and Mark, uh, there's 550 local boards across the nation. Tamara and I have the the fortune to see each other often, almost four times a year, because we attend these. Uh, we both sit on the U.S. Conference of Mayors Workforce Development Council. We sit on the National Association of Workforce Boards High Impact Boards Group, and so Austin is definitely a high impact board, getting great work done. Uh, I've I, again had the fortune. I've only been in ED for four years now, and Tamara's always been generous with uh, the best practices happening there in Austin. So Dave, as the uh, secretary treasurer, another officer role at the Austin board. What do you enjoy most about that role? Well, first, Jaime, thanks for having us here and, and hosting us in your facility and, and um, letting us mix with your people and learn so much. This has been really a lot of fun. You know, I think being the, the secretary treasurer is a lot like being the third string quarterback in a football game. Um, you know, we've got uh, Melanie up there running lead. We've got our, our strong backup right here. And for me, it gives me time being the newer one into the organization a chance to learn the whole playbook and, and understand the programs and everything that goes on, um, understand our board and get a chance to really uh, mingle with them and, and understand all the ideas that are out there. And and then do things like this, get around and get more exposure so that we can become better. And so, you know, it, it's uh, I know my time will come down the road and I've, what I'm doing right now is learning and uh, and absorbing and trying to trying to get better and get ready for when it's my time. I love that visual day because when you watch a football game on Sundays, you know, you see that starting quarterback out there taking the hits, but then I can see Mark standing on the sideline ready to go. He's got his clipboard, you know, uh, helping with the calls, the offensive coordinator. And then the, the third string quarterback also has to be ready in case that second quarterback goes down. Also, I see the third stringer come up when there's punts. He's holding the ball. I mean, you got to be in the game somehow, right? got to be useful. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, as the... Um, uh, uh, as the pot- potentially, hopefully, I think Don Tamara would want it to be the next chair over there in Austin for your term. Uh, you, you bring a lot of value because in your day job, your regular job, you're a healthcare executive. And this is uh, why you're leading the industry sector partnership in Austin. Tell us about how your experience in the healthcare sector has, uh, has helped you lead this industry sector partnership in Austin. Absolutely. Great question. Um, you know, we, we are, uh, most of us across the country in the healthcare sector have, have been challenged over the past two years um, with the pandemic. Um, and, and that has um, uh, brought to the, the staffing crisis that we've been in, or at least the staffing challenges that we've been in uh, for a number of years in healthcare to uh, a place where um, we are continuing to look at new partners. Uh, in new relationships uh, to be able to help identify a quality, talented workforce, um, particularly in Austin. Um, through that relationship and the relationships that we're building through uh, Tamara and her team on the workforce board, our industry sector partnerships, um, and our other healthcare providers in that area, um, we continue to um, to. Uh, provide opportunities for individuals that may be underskilled um, or underserved um, or have had um, 
opportunities that were in front of them disappear because of uh, different life circumstances at, at some point. Um, and we've been able to uh, share a lot of our best practice together as, as in healthcare sector um, and the knowledge that we have from all of our different industries and challenges that we're facing to come up with some, uh, some what we think state of the art and, and best practices in, in the healthcare field that are translating into other sectors that we can share um, with David, uh, maybe on the IT side or, or with Melanie on the manufacturing front. Um, particularly uh, our upscaling. Um, we are uh, very involved in upscaling of using internships and apprenticeships as primary opportunities to expose individuals that may not have thought about getting into healthcare now, uh, explore that healthcare track or that healthcare uh, career path. Um, additionally, we've taken the opportunity to provide opportunities for individuals that are currently in the healthcare um, sector. Um, expand their careers and upscale into areas that uh, we have not tapped into before. Uh, and a lot of this is, is uh, created by our partnership with Tamara and her team. Um, it has helped us reach a, um, an audience that as an industry provider, we may not have been able to reach previously. Um, and, and what Workforce Solutions provides to us is, is that resource of, of job fairs, of helping us prepare people for the market um, prior to. So it saves us uh, time and resources and money on the front end um, by working with, with Tamara and the Workforce Solutions staff to, uh, to prepare these individuals for um, what we call uh, customer-centric hiring, rapid hiring, trying to, 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 uh, to close the deal very quickly because we know it's a competitive market out there. And I like, Mark, how uh, yesterday, again, you're right, we spent hours literally diving into the details of how your industry sector partnership uh, has advanced this purpose. We're months behind you, and what we obviously hope is to, having been validated of our direction, we hope to replicate your success, and we're grateful that you shared those um, those steps that got you there. But one thing that will stick with me is the, the story you told about really elaborating the narrative. And so... A lot of times you have to help people see into the future. And so when you make the proposition of somebody, how would you like to be in the healthcare industry? You kind of project five years into the earning potential, and that's a much compelling story. So thank you for sharing that with us. Certainly. Uh, Dave, so same thing. I think you bring tremendous value uh, learning from what's happening uh, with Mark in the healthcare sector, Melanie in the manufacturing sector. You're now launching the IT sector uh, in Austin as well. And so tell us about how your role, uh, tell us a little bit about your role in the tech industry and how it's helping you do that. So about 30 years in the tech industry and, and I've seen technology grow and grow and grow and then been in Austin about 15 of those years and Austin growing and growing. So there's opportunity galore uh, in technology for upskilling, uh, changing careers for the youth coming in and wanting to start a career early. I, th I think there's just endless opportunities in tech. I think uh, coming in behind what, you know, manufacturing and healthcare has done has laid a nice framework for us that we can follow. And Tamara's done a great job of bringing in some people that uh, have the connections and, and capabilities within her staff to help uh, develop the program. And we're making good headway. I, I think that um, the, the sky is the limit when it comes to this. The uh, tech moves much faster than business does. It's, um, we're all trying to catch up. That's a good thing, but it also creates challenges. But what it does for potential employees is it gives them a starting point where everybody's kind of on level playing ground again because the tech is so new. So with upskilling, internships, and, and the like, uh, it gives new opportunity, and you know, we wanna be a part of making that work in our community. And Dave, I hope you saw it as well. For me, it was really validating to see that as you spoke to the employers and the tech in our area here, uh, the, common, the, the challenges are common. They're not uh, new and, you know, secret. We're sharing the same uh, challenges across the nation. So I think that if anything, this trip you guys made has really showed me and Tamara how it's an opportunity for us EDs to uh, learn from each other, it, uh, implement best practices, replicate successes, because 
uh, Austin's success is Las Vegas' success and the nation's success if we do things right. And so we can help each other uh, address these industry issues and move and really move the needle. So I, I really appreciate that you all took time out of, out of your busy schedules, your day jobs to come here and do this and help us improve the workforce development system in Austin and in Las Vegas. Uh, Mark, as you... Uh, we still have stuff to do. Uh, yesterday, we had a full day of activities. Today, after these podcasts, we're traveling to some of our American job centers for you to see. I know you have a 10-year facilities plan ahead of you, but I learned so much about you guys uh, yesterday. But what do, you, what do you take away, Mark, uh, among all this stuff? Uh, we've talked about a, about a lot of things. What do you take away to Austin thinking, you know, these one, two, three things I really want to move on? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of work ahead of us. We just uh, uh, last week announced in Austin uh, a, a local hire program where we offered uh, a thousand scholarships to to potential individuals in any of our up and coming sectors. Um, that's certainly one step forward, and and it's it's going to uh, help us move forward with with filling those jobs and keeping them local. Um, with that focus, um, I was um, touched and. Um, enjoyed the conversation with the many leaders you had around the table, um, all the way from 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 chamber leaders to uh, to school boards to to superintendents, um, and, and discussing how we have to continue to plant that seed. If we want to stay local, then we got to grow talent locally, uh, and we got to start infusing uh, the the knowledge that we have from all of our sectors uh, at a much earlier uh, age and opportunity. Than, uh, than potentially what we've been doing. And uh, some of the best practices that you shared with us, um, we've already began a little competition among our sector groups here of, of creating uh, uh, the coloring book, I guess is how we described it, and, and how we can customize that to the, to the sectors that we're in. Um, I, I know in, in the healthcare sector, I talked about just the vast number of jobs that are out there, and I think it's an important uh, piece for us to use a tool such as the coloring book that, that your team has put together um, and create it where we can start educating individuals at a, at a very early age and development in their career um, to, to look at roles beyond the registered nurse or the physician. Um, I, I think I share with the group we have over about 2,500 job descriptions and this will certainly be a piece that I'll take back with me as I said, we've already started uh, started our competition to see which sector is going to roll that out first, um, and looking forward to uh, to taking more ideas such as that back and, and implementing them as we continue our local hire strategy in the Austin community. I, th I think that's great, and and anything we can do to support that, let us know. We are also in the middle of updating, you know. Uh, we updated our workforce blueprint this year, 2022. And so we have to update our coloring book as well to match that. And so in the next few weeks, I think we're already 90% done on our healthcare one. It's gonna feature six of those in top in demand occupations. So again, if you wanna see that and compare notes, uh, by all means, that that's um, that's what we wanna do is share with you. Please don't share that with Mark. That oh, would give okay. him a head start. Give him a competitive <laughs> advantage. I, 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 oh, okay. I think certainly that's a great uh, way that we can share our collaboration together. Um, <laughs> Very early on. Very good. We'll do that. Dave, same way. Um, I've enjoyed uh, you spending time with us here. Uh, you know, I got to meet Mark in Long Beach last time and been looking forward to his visit since then. We hope that this is not the last time. I know you guys planted the seed on some of our members that now want to go to Austin. And so I think we have uh, future get togethers um, for us, um, ahead of us. But tell us what are some of your takeaways? You know, we talked about a lot of stuff here, best practices. What do you take away hoping to really uh, move on when you get back to Austin? Well, I think you mentioned it earlier about the commonalities that, that we saw. I, I expected some. I didn't realize how many there would really be. And, and we've seen it for, you know, the multiple days that we have been here. Every situation that we get into and we start discussing, we find that we're thinking the same way and, and working towards the same goals. And uh, first of all, I think that comes from great leadership from you and Tamara, and I think it comes from your great staff and, you know, and then ideally good board members uh, in there to help support it. And, you know, just as an example, we are in the midst of trying to figure out our facilities effort and Tamara has a plan to lay out where are we going to be and how are we going to reach the people that we need to reach over the next 10 years and your strategy for how and where you put your facilities at no cost uh, that is, uh, you know, where the people are and it's easier for them to get there is solving a problem in our head that we've been, you know, deliberating on for, for you know, several weeks now. 
And, and then, you know, you brought up the idea of, well, if you're thinking about mobile, you might want to think about some of the aspects that come with that. So uh, that and a dozen other things, we have pages of notes uh, from the ideas that you and your team have brought to the table and then getting to meet with your representatives and getting to meet with your uh, businesses. Um, we're just filled with ideas and motivation and really appreciate you having us here. Great, Dave. I'm glad you're taking away a lot of uh, a long list of to do. And again, I make the commitment that uh, if notes are not enough, you can always call us, contact us. We'll be there to fill in the gaps when possible. So, Mark, uh, thank God this business was, or this trip was not about all business. We've done some fun stuff. Uh, you know, there's a long list. I know you got to play some golf. Uh, we had uh, uh, squid ink linguine. Uh, we had mussels. We had uh, sea bass and mushroom risotto and pork chops. I mean, we right. really lived it up. Right. We had this uh, blood and sand something you, you know, brought up, which was really good. You even played Peruvian frog game today. So um, I don't know. Do you have a favorite of all that list of enjoyable stuff you, you've been doing here in Las Vegas? All of it was 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 first class. I mean, ab absolutely first class. And and and, and you've hosted us uh, tremendously. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about earlier about uh, Austin and, and and Las Vegas, and it's amazing the similarities that that I've seen during this trip. Um, as a workforce solution um, leader and advocate, uh, we're on twenty four seven. We're always looking at. Um, and, and our minds are thinking about the workforce. Um, even in times you're relaxing, and, and some of the stories I'll share, um, I am ex extremely um, uh, encouraged that service is back, meaning the, the service trade. And, and for a while, I think during uh, our pandemic, uh, we, we lost some of that in, in a lot of our industries. Healthcare is a service industry. Um, Austin's a very large service industry, and so is, is Las Vegas. From the time I landed here um, uh, all the way through the time that I've, I've spent, every interaction I've had with either an individual at a restaurant or an individual sitting uh, having coffee in the morning at, at, at one of the casinos, um, uh, a, a taxi ride, um, sitting at the golf course, and, and just having conversations, um, I see that 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 skill of, of service in everybody, um, and that has been the most impressive to me is to to see that take place here. Um, congratulations to to your team that are uh, helping identify that and make sure that that's a skill that needs to continue to be um, developed to all the leaders, to all the industry players. Um, it's a very important piece, and and you notice that. Um, so separate of that. Um, I think the next piece is we, we're we going to have to um, maybe walk our next 18 holes and, and, and burn off some of these calories that, that we took in. The, the, the donuts the, uh, definitely are, are at the top of my mind right now. <laughs> um, but all, all, the, all the, the food, the, um, uh, the entertainment has, has been, has been uh, first class, and we really appreciate and look forward to reciprocating uh, when you come to Austin. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, Austin. I know that you guys, uh, I was really disappointed that um, the pandemic took away the opportunity to display Austin. You guys work so hard. There's so many things that the uh, that the nation, our peers would have uh, enjoyed, I think. But the pandemic, you know, was probably the worst thing that happened. Um, and so, yes, we're looking forward to that Austin trip. I hope also that the U.S. Conference of Mayors reschedules that um that hosting event that your mayor, you know, had prepared with such, you know, effort. I know uh, it was going to be great. So, uh, and here, yes, I think that um, I, I enjoy these little things so much. Even yesterday, as we had those special donuts, I know I was grateful that the donuts came with um, the donut and the hole, the little little round thing. So. Sure. Those who did not have a long, com a large commitment to a donut could just have <laughs> that tiny hole, That's and it right. reminded me uh, a little bit about Austin because Tamara always talks about uh, the donut shape or something up there in Capital Area and the board. You know, uh, it's always a comparison that I think about the donut in the Austin area. So, uh, Dave, same thing as you now. Uh, you know, the business was great. We've talked about all the business. Uh, what what kind of takeaway do you take in the fun part from the capital entertainment of the world when you go back home? 
Food for sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of Peruvian food. Had uh, never experienced that and loved the lunch that we had. Uh, the dinner was great. The squid ink linguine. I had to take a slow bite at first and then took probably more than my <laughs> share. It was really good as well. Um, but really, most of all, I, I think uh, it's you and your people. Haven't you know? I feel like we have new friends now, and um, I, I appreciate all the things that are going on here and how well you are organized. And you know, to Mark's point, everything being first class from your brochures to the layout that you have here uh, to your facility next door. Uh, it's really amazing. And, you know, it's great to see a community of great people uh, helping others. And, you know, we're going to take all the, the good things that we learned here and, and apply it in Austin. And then when you guys come, we're not going to be playing frog, uh, the frog game, but we'll get you into some cornhole. And uh, but we will have a ping pong challenge. We've got to get that worked out to see, you know, which board here uh, is better? Reign supreme and ping pong. That's, that's it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think um, a trophy's in order. I think something. But but, you know. Tamara's a pretty good dancer. I think oh, you know that. Yeah. And uh, I think, again, when the group comes to Austin, it, the Tamara would be uh, a very uh, very supportive of teaching you how to do the two-step. Okay. Um, certainly that's a skill that she could Let's put that on the agenda. Teach. Yeah, let's definitely definitely put that on the agenda. Well, we're looking forward to our trip to Austin. Uh, Dave, Mark, I want to thank you again, not just for the dedicating all the time for the business, but uh, also setting aside time to do all those fun things. Uh, again, looking forward to reciprocating and visiting you in Austin. Thank you for coming today for our podcast. Thank you for hosting. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So that's it for today's uh, episode of the WC Podcast. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Until then, stay safe. Okay, Mark, Dave, thank you for staying over to do our bonus segment, Call Against the Wall. The right, first segment ready. is called Your Favorites. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Mark, we're going to start with you. Tell me your favorite food. Favorite food, uh, lobster. Dave. Anything breakfast. All right. Uh, Mark, your favorite movie. Uh, Top Gun. Dave. Um, I don't think that's a movie, Dave. It is. Um, you haven't seen that, <laughs> seen that one. Top Gun Maverick. The new one. I haven't seen that one yet, so oh, okay. I can't do that one. I actually have a favorite, but I'm struggling to remember it because it's the baseball movie. Oh, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Yeah, By I love that favorite. movie. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mark, your favorite city to visit? Uh, Las Vegas. That's my man right you there. Know. Dave, can you top that? Well, since I know that's the right answer, I'm going to say Las Vegas. <laughs> Very good. You guys are doing great. <laughs> uh, Mark, your favorite subject in school? Favorite subject in school would be crafts class. Wow. Like, like to be imaginative, creative. Wow. That's a great. Dave. Math. All right. Craft and math. Uh, Mark, your favorite artist or musical group? The Clarks. Dave. <laughs> Look surprised. ACDC. ACDC. Wow. What a <laughs> contrast. All right. Uh, Mark, your favorite holiday? St. Patrick's Day. Dave. Wow. Uh, I'm going to go with Christmas. Oh, uh -huh. so... Drinking and eggnog. That's Perfect. The balance. That's good. Uh, Mark, your favorite sports team? The Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. Dave? The Dallas Stars hockey team. So when those teams come to Vegas, we can expect you to see you here? We would they love play to the Raiders Absolutely. The, all right. All right. So you made it through our first segment called Your Favorites. I'm going to switch the order now for the next segment called Tough Choices. So, uh, Dave, would you rather vacation in the U.S. or abroad? Abroad. Mark. I think I'm going to go with the, the United States first. All right. Know your own country first. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Dave, would you rather go camping or glamping? I like camping. Mark. I think there's th th this has two answers. One, I, I think I would love the glamping, but my, my girls would have to be glamping. What was it? It was glamping. And camping. camping. And camping. No, I'd be, uh, they wouldn't do camping. So I'd have to camp and they'd glamp. Yep, I yeah, agree. Yeah, it, it would have to be one of those, those uh, sites. Hybrid scenario. A hybrid scenario. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. In the morning, uh, Dave, coffee or tea? Coffee. Mark. Coffee. All right. So we did good today in the green room. We had donuts and coffee. We did Done good. Great. Uh, Dave, would you rather owe money or owe a favor? 
I'd rather owe a favor. Mark? I think I would owe money. Okay. Uh, Dave, cats or dogs? Definitely dogs. Mark? Got to go with the dog. All right. Uh, Dave, one of my favorites here, justice or grace? Grace. Mark? Grace. Yep. And then you guys were in my office yesterday. Uh, Dave, actions or words? Actions. Mark? Actions all the way. There you go. So you guys finished the second segment. We're going to uh, round up with the third segment called finish the sentence. So as it says, I'm going to give you 90% of a sentence. You're going to finish it for me. We're going to start with you, Mark. If you could live anywhere, it would be? Uh, on a lake. I like it. Dave? In the country by a river. Wow. Both of you like water. That's good. So Dave, to you. Your favorite thing about your job is? The people I get to interact with. Mark, your favorite thing about your job is? Providing opportunities for others. Very cool. You, you're both connected to your passion, which is, I think, why you uh, always seem happy. Uh, Mark, the best part of visiting Southern Nevada was? Gosh, uh, food, people, uh, lights, uh, the heat. Um, getting away from the office. Um, Dave, that's a hard, that's a long list. That's I think he took all the answers already. Yeah, didn't he, he did. So Dave, we're going to try it with you. The best part of visiting Southern Nevada was your people. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, they enjoyed you guys as well. And thank you for leaving them with those awesome, delicious, uh, gifts. Uh, uh I'm sure the break room is going to be popular here at lunch. Uh, Dave, three words that describe you are. Innovative, passionate, and caring. I agree. Mark, three words that describe you are? Humble and kind. That was three. And kind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and. Okay, very good. Um, Mark, if you could travel back in time, you would travel to? Wow. Uh, so many historical opportunities. Um I am thinking uh, I would love to go back to um, gosh uh, England uh, early on with the uh, uh, history the of 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 the castles. Wow! All right, and knights. We, I can see him as a knight, Dave. Yeah, I can see him. I can see it. Little, little. <laughs> Dave, if you could travel back in time, you would travel to? I would travel back to when all those aliens came down here and built all those giant pyramids and everything. I want to yeah. see it with my own eyes. Yeah, I, that's a good one. You need to tell me about that. <laughs> uh, here's the final question. Dave, doing the WC podcast today was? More fun than I anticipated. Great. Uh, Mark, doing the WC podcast today was? invigorating. Great. You guys have been awesome. Uh, we, I can't tell you again how much uh, I've enjoyed. We've enjoyed the visit of the Austin team, and uh, we can't wait to see you again in Austin. Thank you for staying over today. Thank you for having us.